Fintan O'Toole joins me here because we're going to talk about the best Mayo team, the best Mayo 15, I should say, from the last 25 years. Uh, it, it wasn't that easy to actually narrow it down, especially with the forward line, because they've had so many players over the years. But I suppose no better place to start in the goals where the decision probably is a little bit easier. I think so, yeah. I think overall it was it was a tricky team because they are, you know, over the, the time span we're looking at, they've been to so many all Ireland finals. So automatically you've teams with, uh, you know, bodies of work behind them, to use that phrase, over the course of the season, you know, they, they've had, and especially over the last couple of years, they've played so many games, like, I mean, it's not like maybe the olden days, you know, the 96, 97, you might have had only four games and you get to an Ireland final, um, you know, they've seen some of the qualifier runs, so there's a lot of kind of games and evidence to kind of look at in terms of kind of determining. Uh, but yeah, I went for David Clark and goal, uh, kind of more recent uh, one, Um Sorry, maybe more recent in terms of all star, but in fairness, longevity wise, like he's been around a long time, uh, maybe kind of in and out of the team. Um, and obviously, you know, it became this fairly heated source of debate nationally between himself and Stephen Cluxton in uh, all star selections in recent years. But I definitely think, in the Mayo sense, he's been the, the best keeper, probably kind of vying with Rob Henley more recently for inclusion. Um, and then kind of various other guys kind of would have been involved uh, previously that over the years, but. And the in fact way, that like, he was even nominated for Footballer of the Year, you know, and got the All Star. Yeah. Was that the year he got the All Star ahead of Cluxton when Cluxton was also nominated? Yeah, so that was 16. And then he got, I think it was 16, and he got it as well in 17. Um, but, you know, like his, his shots not being a bit, bit maybe underrated, but I think he's very, very good at kind of spreading himself in kind of one on one situations. Uh, I think he's one of the keepers as well that has responded to the standards that Cluxton has set. If you think of over the last decades, um, Paul Durkin probably won in Donegal. Maybe we didn't see him as much because he kind of, uh, you know, he moved abroad for a while. Um, but Clark's one of those guys' kickouts definitely hugely improved and he kind of moved with the game uh, over the last couple of years. So, yeah, I put him in as number one. Yeah, the full back line, there's probably a couple of contentious ones here. Uh, I'll let you name them out and then I'll take a few cuts. Well, the, the whole the, the whole defence is quite difficult because it's ultimately been the biggest source of strength, hasn't it, for Mayo over the last decade? Even if you look at the amount of All Star teams over the last decade as 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 a measure of it, like the amount of Mayo players that uh, they get ones, yeah. But so in the full back lane, um, kind of went for maybe two former players and one current. So a kind of a nod back to the early parts of this time frame went for Kenneth Mortimer, the right corner back. I mean, he All Star in ninety six, ninety seven. Uh, I guess it would still be maybe a kind of a what if moment in Mayo football should he have picked up Morris Fitzgerald in uh, that the uh, ninety seven final. Um so yeah, I went for him there, I went for David Heaney at full back, kind of the middle era of this time, you know, with the old four or six, very, very consistent there. And then latterly then Keith Higgins. Uh, I think Higgins is, is a definite lock in there. I mean he's four time all star. Um he's around since oh six, I think was his first year, wasn't mm-hmm. it? He captained Mayo to the Ireland 21 that year, and then he played. I remember, him, remember his run up the fields in uh, in the lead up to that famous Kieran McDonald point in the semi final against Dublin. Um, so he's not been around a long time. Obviously, played hurling for Mayo as well, so he's been kind of one of the few county jewels there. So I think he's the, he's the definite there, and I've gone for Mortimer and Heaney alongside him. Yeah, so you, you can take that apart now. Yeah, well, I mean, it's hard to take it apart. Maybe pick a few little holes and maybe well fill them back in. But like Dermot Flanagan is a name that comes up. Jarek Hafferke is an all star. Um, there's there's also the option of do you look more recently and say Brennan Harrison? He's had a good couple of years. Um, I'm not sure if you're picking. Well, we haven't decided just yet whether Paddy Durkin is going in here. So, is there a possibility of Paddy Durkin going into the full back line or the half back line and someone else dropping out? Because we know what a good half back line may have. They're probably more heavily stocked in the half back line than most teams in the country, with the exception of probably Dublin. So did you did you consider Brendan Harrison and maybe Jared Cafferty? Yeah, and by the way, yeah, with, with Heaney as well, possibly, you know, in those All Irelands where they were beaten and big scores were putting up against them, he possibly had a little bit of trouble in those. Yeah, a bit of bother in finals, uh, especially the 06 one. I suppose like a lot of the Mayo team that they went, what they can see that they four fifteen was it um, against something Kerry. like that. Yeah, uh, but I think kind of overall, you know, I think he was. Um, really consistent. Uh, the other one actually I'd throw in is Kevin Cowell. Uh, Shannon, a couple of people was kind of very highly rated, would have been involved in 96 um, in the full back lane. But yeah, Cafferty, so Cafferty's in all-star in 2012, Harrison is in 2016. 
you know, Cafferty injury wise probably hasn't had a as extended a run as maybe some of the others, and then Harrison will probably come a little bit later. So you know, if you're if you're picking this in a few years' time, maybe over a kind of a wider time frame, you know, he might come come into the equation. Then the other thing is, well, the last five years, you know, like all teams in football, the, the back six isn't as kind of rigid as this. Uh, no, these sets like I mean, you you take someone like Lee Keegan, you know, he goes back full back last year, and Connor Callahan, okay, that doesn't obviously go. Uh, well for um, well for me, but then like I remember the year was at sixteen when they played Tipperary. He went back and kind of shattered Michael Quinlan, and, and he, he did the Quinlan. same against Sean Kavanagh as well. Remember when he was full forward? That's it. Yeah, he did, he did a good job. So it was kind of it's become more matchups, hasn't it? Like Boyle has been kind of comfortable as well, kind of sweeping, you know. So there was that kind of a, a difficulty there, but um, probably yeah, probably something kind of more the traditional three fullback. Another one for the full back line, even though he's played in the half back as well, is Chris Barrett. But Again, he's kind of moved between a couple of the positions. Uh, probably had a, he's, he's actually run a good world in terms of he was on that 21 team in 06, but has had a couple of injury problems, I think, initially. But I think over the last, maybe the second phase of his senior career, he's really, really established himself. So they they definitely were all kind of in the frame. Mm, Tom Kniff is probably another that maybe if he didn't go abroad also or had a couple of more years, he might be in consideration or certainly warrants a mention. Um, half back line then. I mean, Lee Keegan, former footballer of the year, he's a complete lock for this. But it's probably not easy to just settle on a couple of others. No, so he's a lock at five. I think, even though as mm. we said, he has sometimes gone back and kind of man marking jobs um, elsewhere on the pitch. Or you know, he's because the way his game has gone, you, you think of his goal against Dublin in the seventeen final. He's been pushing forwards, um, kind of involved in that sense. Uh, alongside him at six, I'm with James Nallan. Again, maybe I'm trying to spread the team selection out over the different eras of, you know, the, the wave of recent all Ireland finals may have been in the two in the noughties and the two in the nineties. So he's part of that team. Um ah, he was again, this, this won't really factor in here, but like he did he did win an all Ireland club medal as well across the line. Mm. Kind of very much the four in that team, very consistent. Um I suppose he spanned both of them as well. Like he, he's an all star in eighty six and he's an all star in 04. So that's a good time frame. Then Cullen Boyle kinda of went for in this the last half back. Now, there's a good few contenders for this, you know, Barrett could come in there. Durkin definitely is a big contender, but yeah. he's probably the reason Durkin suffers ultimately is because you're picking this on the basis of twenty nineteen and like Boyle has had a greater run at it and kind of more more chances, you know, he's he has four all stars. He has, but at the same time, Durkin's probably been around for five seasons now. And he had that run where he kept Shane Walsh, Jack McCaffrey and was it Sean O'Shea held them all scoreless scored eight points himself in that championship yeah. run a couple of seasons ago and, and all... Smith as well did he, did he mark did he take up him in that game or was that maybe that was Keegan uh, Keegan um, definitely took him up a couple of years ago and sent him back the other mm-hmm. way and that was after um, Enda Smith had a brilliant uh, conic final against Galway if I remember correctly Galway yeah 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 yeah, uh, yeah. yeah so bit like this is a bit more interchangeable and the option mm-hmm. then would be I think Boyle you could put him back into the full back line. I think you have to pick Boyle personally yeah it's, I guess it's, it's where you pick him but well, I kind of put him in here at seven what do you want from your half backs do you want someone who can go up and drive the team the other way or do you want someone like Boyle who's going to put his body on the line and mind the house for you well I guess it's what type of you know if we're picking a team from 95 to 2019 what year are they playing if they're if they're playing more recently, then you're thinking of their football is gone. But if they're playing uh, back in the kind of older days, maybe it's kind of you want the guys kind of staying kind of mind the house a bit. So, what uh, year do you want this team to agonisingly lose an All Ireland final? Uh, well, <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry, my offence. That, that's that's the consideration, all right. Like, but I like, definitely I think Durkin is probably the unluckiest of all the defenders. Um, we mentioned a good few current ones there, which kind of points to their. You know, it's the bedrock of the team, really, isn't it? It's kind of what's driven them on over the past decade to kind of keep coming back and kind of keep getting to this stage. Um, like, how many times have kind of people said it's it's one of the reasons why they kind of went toe to toe with Dublin because they're one of the few teams that could leave their four, their defenders in one on one matchups. They could trust their defenders, probably a bit more aggressive than most in their style of defending. Um, in a, in a good way, like you know, you think of kind of space afforded to Dublin by other teams, you know, they didn't really get that to the same extent um in Mayo. So there's a lot, a lot of contenders there. But I yeah, I think Durkin is probably the most unlucky to, mm. to miss out, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Boyle. Couple of big men at midfield. Yeah. Uh the two I went for again, versatility kind of cropped up a bit here. So Aidan O'Shea has played but he played fullback on one occasion, memorably against Donahue. Very well actually. Played, 
he's played in the full forward line uh, on Philly McMahon. He would kind of uh, play there underage. Actually, the very first year, I think, for Mayo. Yeah, because he, he was... Just much, didn't he play for forward? Yeah, he was the answer to Kerry and had the twin towers of Donaghy and Walsh. And he was... Yeah. Uh, so Aidan O'Shea went full forward with... Was it Barry Moran for a while? And they were the twin towers of Mayo. Yeah, I think Mortimer was kind of playing off them, Conor Mortimer. Yeah. So, um, I think it's the... So, he's a minor in 08 to get to the replay that year against Tyrone. He kind of comes to the fore then. In the following year, he's full, yeah, he's full forward. They lose to Mead, I think. Is it in the quarter final? Um, I think he gets a couple of goals in that championship to play goal in the in the Connors final. Uh, so, he starts there. And then, okay, he's at that full back. But he's kind of... I think the main decision here is do you play in midfield or centre forward? But I think you have to play him. You know, I think he's really become the driving force uh, over the last couple of seasons. Um, gets gets a good bit of stick, I think, doesn't he? From maybe, Lots of it. you know, every team has a kind of a figure that maybe is it opposing fans or kind of nationally people think is a little bit overrated. But I think I think he's lived up to the hype a bit over the last couple of seasons. You know, I think he's really been really really impressive in the way he's kind of tailored his game. Um, yeah, three all stars so in different positions. Good. Yeah, so her. Yeah. 13, 15 and 17 so that's kind of a kind of a good spread and and he's had good seasons um thought he was really good remember last year in the first half the draw of the sorry the semi-final against Dublin and um, then obviously it kind of fell apart for Mayo after half time and then I put in alongside him Liam McHale uh again a nod to the kind of start to this time era the unlucky man of the kind of 96 uh final replay and probably a case of what if again like Manny of Mayo and all in the finals with regards, you know, if, if if decisions or incidents had kind of gone another way, you think if he'd sit on the pitch, uh, the kind of impact he could have made. A uh, couple of other contenders. Um, well, Dermot O'Connor is definitely one, and as much even just for that performance against Kildare in the Newbridge mm. or Nowhere game, as much as anything else, because that was just a tireless display. But did you look, the pitch. Yeah, did you yeah, look at him uh, more in the half forward line, or did you look at him here yeah. in midfield? No, I, I did kind of look at him more as a kind of a number 10. Um, and that's where he was really, really close. So I kind of probably was thinking, so Pat Fallon is a 90, an all-star winner in 1987, probably maybe a short kind of time frame there uh, in terms of the kind of opportunities for mm-hmm. him to kind of shine and persuade to get, if you're to get included here. David they, Brady kind yeah. of a fusion over a longer period of time definitely has to be a contender. Ronan McGarrity? Uh, Ronan McGarrity. And Tom another, Harrison's? Brady, Brady's another one, the all Ireland club. He managed to get over the line with Ballan or five, and, def- and definitely Parsons. I mean, probably quite unlucky, I would say, in seventeen, maybe not to get an All Star. Mm. Um, then obviously his leg injury of last year, even alone to get back in action, has been absolutely heroic, you know. And he's become really, really important for them. And again, I suppose he was a guy he was in Cardiff for a while, wasn't he? Uh, kind of early part of his career, he kind of moved over to work, kind of came back playing club football, and kind of came back into the Mayo fold again. Um, so I guess that's quite probably why I went for Michael and O'Shea kind of, a, kind of maybe a greater spread of involvement mm. and then the half forward line I think surely Kieran McDonald is centre forward and after that it's a, it's only it's only filling out jerseys after that yeah so I, I well I think there's two certainties in the half forward line to be honest obviously McDonald yeah. you know as much for the kind of cult hero kind of maverick stuff um, well he's the know, sort of lad who makes young lads want to, want to actually play football just because yeah, of the style. Absolutely. Yeah. Um we with Daryl Canada on a podcast we've seen for 42, and he was basically talking about him. He said, was it the 406 final? He said, you know, he could he couldn't but admire him. He said he challenged McDonald for a free. And uh or so he fouled him and he challenged the referee for free, free was given. And he basically saw McDonald kind of spin the ball in his hand 60 yards out and then just arc it over the bar into the hill. And he was thinking, my God, this team are going down because Kerry were well ahead at the time. And he's still trying, you know, he's not doing the simple give and go. Um, and, you know, you think of the 06 point, and he just tried, you know, amazing. So even like, go back to how many times have people watch the year till Sunday, and it's the two goals he gets in that uh, in that first round game, the goal way Mayo contributions across Moina. Um, yeah, probably could be here all day eulogizing him, but I think he's the he's the absolute definite. I think Alan Dillon as well for a half forward line. I mean, I know latterly, towards the end of his career, his influence probably faded a little bit. He still had a very good, what year did they play Tyrone in a quarterfinal? He started the game, it was kind of a late inclusion. Um, trying to think now, was that I'm, 16? I remember um, the, it was a semi-final in 16, was that the one where Tom Kniff and Peter Hart more or less killed each other in a car crash collision? Yeah, 
Yeah. I think um, that was 16. I might 16, 16, 16 or 17, I think it was. It was a quarterfinal. And he was brilliant uh, in that game. And then, you know, he's he's kind of one of the guys that comes to the four and all six. Uh, when McDonald gets that point against Dublin, he gets a couple of big scores during it. Um, you know, he's there for a couple of bad years then, like, you know, when they kind of get knocked out of the championship with Lakes of Longford. And then he's very much to the four in 2012. He gets an all-star that year when they... Uh, lose to Donegal in the final and he's you when know, that, really, really kind of prominent mm, when that was on telly recently I kind of at the time thought maybe he wasn't that good in that game but when I watched it back I was like his influence was pretty good because that was such a physical and athletic Donegal team my kind of memory was like okay smaller guy probably not the paciest we know he's elusive not the paciest but yeah. when I watched it back I was thinking he actually played, played pretty well there yeah, I suppose the role of a kind of half forward chain over the last couple of years, they did what you were kind of maybe looking for. But his his thing is, you know, his ball playing skills are really, really good. Like, you know, his kicking, his delivery is in. Well, able to kick a point from kind of a 40, 45 yard range, you know, fairly comfortable there. Um, he's had a pretty, pretty big influence in club football and he's played at a high level over the last couple of years, like Ballantover, still winning counties and going up against Curfin and Connacht. So put him in at 12. 10 then was a bit of a deliberation. Uh, Went for Kevin McLaughlin in the end. Um, it's just really consistent, I think. Really kind of maybe underrated. Uh, kind of pops up with big scores every now and again. You know, even stuff like, say, the league game a couple of years ago against Donegal when he saved them from relegation. 15 steps. One of those. Well, he's, he's still that one of those really, really kind of dependable uh, dependable figures. But there's a, there's a good few other contenders here, like James Horan. Bit more identified now in the Mayo kind of story for what he's done as a manager, but I mean he still wins two All Stars as a player. Yeah, ninety six and nine. Yeah, and then you mentioned a big one then earlier in Jim O'Connor. Yeah, the kind of influences he has had. So if 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 we're picking this in five years' time, maybe uh, Paddy Dirk and Jim O'Connor are going to be the locks thing. Because you imagine they're going to be the two kind of leaders of Mayo for a while longer. But for the moment, uh, we'll go with McLaughlin at number ten. Yeah, I I even think of twenty eleven. Do you remember when Cork were all Ireland champions and McLaughlin yeah. scored that brilliant top corner goal as Mayo? Actually, didn't Mayo go on a run of, was it four years where they had knocked out the all Ireland champions of the previous years? Yeah, so the uh, Cork in 11, Dublin in the semi final in 12, uh, Killian O'Connor gets the hat trick against Donegal in 13, and then 14. Dublin. Um, oh, they wouldn't have beaten Dublin that year. No, Donegal. So no. yeah, it was three years in a row to beat the all Ireland champions. Not that's bad going. Really, that's really just another statistic to add to the, the agony, isn't it? If they didn't yeah, manage to go over the line. It sure is. Uh, we'll move into the full forward line. Yeah, so uh, Annie Moore in full forward, I think he's a lock, isn't he? Yeah, um, ah, yeah. He's an all-star in 20... Oh, sorry, he's around in 06. He gets the goal against Dublin in the semi-final. He's an all-star in 2011. The first year of the kind of the recovery operation, if you want to call it that, uh, given a couple of bad years. Um they get to a semi-final against Kerry and lose pretty comfortably in the end. Uh, but they've taken down Cork in the quarter-final and they've kind of started to claw their way back into it. Uh, is crucial injury there in 2012? Do you think that's a big impact ultimately when they do get to the all-around final? Uh, that injury he suffers against them means he's a big loss uh, subsequently. And then he, his maybe influence fades a little bit because uh, he's in and out of the team and he kind of comes back. But then he's really established himself before he kind of retired uh, football of the year in 2017 his his movement was the big thing for me like you know he's like he's, he's just unbelievable wasn't he in the kind of full forward line the way he kind of gave them that kind of focal point and that kind of outlet uh, so I think he's uh, undisputed and then the two have gone alongside him are the two who I suppose vied for the uh, the top scorer in Mayo football history uh, over the last while Conor Mortimer on one side and Killian O'Connor on the other so one all star apiece, Mortimer in 06, O'Connor in 14. I kind of thought O'Connor might have more. I know everyone says that he scores a lot from freeze, but he still, while well, some of them obviously in high profile games haven't uh, gone well for him, he's still really, really dependable. Like, I mean, he came straight into the Mayo team after minor, so he's around since 2011. Uh, gets a lot of goals as well, like, you know, and has improved, I think, a lot as a kind of a poacher, um, kind of fairly opportunistic in open play. And it's part of it too how they use him these days because he might often wear 13, 14 or 15 but you'd see him much further away from goal so maybe they don't think for whatever reason maybe they don't think he has the pace or the burst or whatever it is that the likes of Andy Moore has and so they reckon using him further out the field is more to their advantage 
yeah, I think that's definitely a factor that Moran became the fulcrum of it inside and you end up so many times these days with just kind of one person inside that it made sense to kind of base it around him and have O'Connor kind of floating around maybe on the, the kind of fringes and getting on breaks on half forward line and then like obviously the, the point he scored in 16 in the drawn final like to even take that on and to nail it under pressure from distance you know that was brilliant brilliant sport um, and Mortimer you know as well probably kind of a malign figure at times uh, in Mayo football but you know really really skillful like you know gifted kicker of the ball uh, I think 16 against Dublin you know kicked some great points that that year um, there's a couple of other contenders for that I think in uh, Kevin O'Neill is one you know, he wins an all-star in 93 so that kind of falls outside of the criteria we put down here comes back into the side then in the 2000s so it was probably out of it a bit too long but he was brilliant really really good uh, he, like, he had a cute kind of role in that 06 season you know McDonald gets the famous point against Dublin but it's like O'Neill does a lot of the hard work and kind of holding on to the ball and the pressure drawing the defenders in and, and laying it off uh, to McDonald so they consider him Jason Doherty another one over the last couple of seasons become really really consistent but I suppose you could put him into the half four lane as well but I'm thinking in terms of kind of two kind of scoring corner forwards and that's been the charge level against Mayo that they haven't produced enough of them and uh, enough guys that have kind of done it when they kind of needed it towards the end of the championship but I think Mortimer and O'Connor have been the kind of two that deliver most uh, most consistently yeah yeah it's probably hard to argue that like Colin McManaman is another player who definitely had scores in him over the years I'm not sure where exactly he falls in terms of I was just trying to look it up there as you were chatting what years he did and didn't play but he was another really good forward he was, he was I could be wrong but was, it, was he got more like a deep line centre forward mm. like maybe started with 11 and then kind of came 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 kind of deep you know well we um, want our forward line to be flexible here Fintan well that's true that's true so that's why uh, we kept McLaughlin going up and down and uh, Aidan O'Shea at number 9 you know, so we can put him in if we need to in fairness now, I'm just throwing it up on the screen now. It's not a bad team. David Clark, Kenneth Mortimer, David Heaney, Keith Higgins, Lee Keegan, James Nallan, Colin Boyle, Lee McHale, Aidan O'Shea, Kevin McLaughlin, Kieran McDonald, Alan Dillon, Connor Mortimer, Andy Moran, and Killian O'Connor. Do you know what? Mm. I think the famine could be over. Got it, you know. Some some uh, act of bad luck will befall them, you know. I mean cool. they've well or maybe they've had everything at this stage, you know, red cards, own goals great carry teams all this kind of stuff you know mm. um, I think it's probably a sign that I said the two people I would have thought closest to getting in would have been Paddy Dirk and, and Darren O'Connor which probably shows that well the Mayo team over the last you know the, the tens didn't get over the line I'd say the impact they have had mm. in terms of you know these these sort of debates in terms of the, the kind of position they'll have in the county's history uh, there's a lot a lot of really good players in that frame Okay, so that's our Mayo team of the last 25 years. If you disagree, agree, whatever it is, let us know.